Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead and let the kids go off to class. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to open up here in prayer tonight. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you are a mighty God, that you're a living God, that you are a holy God. That you are a God, Lord Heavenly Father, that will continue, Lord God, just to, you know, move in our lives with favor, with abundance, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, right now for all that you're doing. Help us always, Lord God, to see, Lord God, the good in, in the things, Lord God, that, you know, the world may not see good in, Lord God. And help us, Lord God, to always be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you here tonight. We thank you that you are here with us always and that you give us power to overcome the flesh and to do those things that God has said that we can do in his word. We thank you here tonight and we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. How many of you guys believe that being born again or baptized by the Spirit is important? Now, I just want you to think about that real briefly, you know what I mean? Now, in your mind, why do you think that's so important? You know, maybe because that's something that we've been told in a sermon or in church or, you know, other places or whatnot. But, you know, I want to tell you here tonight that being baptized or born again spiritually is, is very important for, for all believers. You know, when we read the book of Acts, we hear of something amazing and miraculous that, that takes place. Because we move past the Gospels and we move past, you know, something that we've seen in the flesh. And now we move into, you know, something that we begin to see in the supernatural. You know, and it's so important because, you know, uh, the stories that you hear in the Gospels are not the same stories that you hear in the book of Acts. And um, many, pe many people's lives were, were changed and transformed because of the Holy Spirit. You know, what happens is when you receive the Holy Spirit is you're no longer the same. You know, now the same Peter that we talk about in, in, in the Gospels is not the same Peter that we, that we see in, in, in the book of Acts. Why? Because he is born again now in the book of Acts. He's, he's received the, the Holy Spirit. You know, yes, he might look the same on the outside. He may still have, you know, the, the same color skin, the same color eyes. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about those type of features that have changed. But what I'm talking about is something on the inside has begun to change in this man. You know what? And, and this took place, you know, in the book of Acts because of the Holy Spirit. Because of the Holy Spirit. You know, as you read the book of Acts, you'll wonder, are these guys the same guys? You know, you hear that story when, when you know, amongst believers, you know, hey, that, that ain't the same guy. That ain't the same guy that I used to know. That ain't the same guy that, that I used to hang out with. You know what I mean? It's, it's not the same. They're, they're different. They still look the same, but they're different. You know what I mean? They're different. You know, how many people know that you're different? You know, and then I go on to say this because, you know, a lot of times we, we, we receive the Holy Ghost. And we, don't use it. we don't use it. You know, we receive the Holy Spirit and what happens is, you know, we begin to change. You know what, people begin to see things different in us. And then what happens, you know what, the, 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 the people don't see change no more. People don't see a difference in us when, when they should. Um, I want you to go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 
Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, the brothers, what shall we do? I want to stop right there briefly. Now there was a, a statement that was made here. And it said that the statement that was made that it cut the people to the heart. Why? Because they began to realize that they crucified the Messiah. The Messiah. You know, how many of us have been through that in our life, you know what I mean, that we didn't realize how important something was or how much something meant to us until it was taken away from us or we lost it. And we lost it. You know, a lot of people, they had Jesus, right, and, you know, in the Gospels, as we read the Gospels, Jesus was, was here on the earth walking amongst them. And a lot of people didn't even realize that the Messiah and the Savior was right here. The best thing, the greatest thing, God, until he was taken away. You know, there's things in our lives that we don't realize, you know what, and, and it doesn't take place until after we receive the Holy Spirit, that things aren't pulled out of our life. And what happens, you know what I mean, as those things are pulled out of our life, we begin to see God for who he really is. We see him for who he really is. You know, um, it says that they were cut to the heart. And they begin to ask Peter and the apostles and brothers, what shall we do? You know, have people seen such a visible change in your life? You know what? That they begin to ask, you know what? Well, what shall I do? You know what? I've seen what that visible God did in your life. You know what the visible God does in your life? The visible God is, is a Holy Spirit that is working inside of you. A visible God is being born again, you know what I mean, and filled with the Holy Ghost so people can see a visible God. That way they can begin to, what shall we do? You know what, I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of talking like this. I'm tired of seeing things like this. You know what, I want to change. I want to change. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time in life just, you know, trying to cope. When the Bible tells us that we should have joy. You know, I'm tired of going through life just trying to cope. See, many Christians are going through life just coping. And the reason why they're going through life just coping is because they need an encounter with God. They need to be born again, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, we're going to be persecuted. Yes, we're going to go through hard times. But man, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, when you're filled with the very presence of God and you're going through life with the presence of God, man, things just seem to be a lot more easier. That's right. That's right. That's right. Just seem to be a lot more easier. Amen? Let's go on. He says that Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Man. You know, a lot of times, you know what, we spent, yes, we got to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. But how many of you know that a lot of people didn't accept Jesus as Lord and Savior? We hear that in the Bible. But yet they were born again. The Apostle Paul didn't receive Jesus as Lord and Savior when he was on the road to Damascus. He had an encounter. And what happened? He was born again. How about the two that were on the side of the cross of Jesus? You know what? They were slandering, telling him all kinds of stuff. And finally, it just popped in one of the guys' head and said, You know what? This is the Messiah. You know what? He just repented, is all he did. He repented. And what have you said? This day you shall be with me in heaven too, or in paradise. You know, about repentance. Repentance is so important. It's not about rituals. It's not about all this stuff, but you know what it's about? You know, being true to who you believe in. And he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
from the drug addict, the alcoholic, to the murderer, to the, to the slave, to the brokenhearted, all of those people. You know what? It's not just for, for one individual. It's for everybody. You know what? And it's not even just for those type of people, man. It's for the banker. You know what? It's for, for the people that don't even do drugs and alcohol. You know what? All the other people that are, are lost and, and broken and don't know Jesus. But they need to repent and be baptized. You know, a lot of times people, they just don't realize, you know, what, what that piece is that they're missing in their life. Man, if they would just repent of that, man, I, I don't know what I'm missing. You know what you're missing? You're missing the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You're missing the Holy Ghost. That's what you're missing. Man, imagine if more people were excited about being baptized by the Holy Ghost. In the times that we're living in right now, Amen. I believe we would see a lot more tent revivals. Right. Man, it'd be spectacular going to Benedict's Park and seeing families laid out in the Holy Ghost. You know what? And they didn't even want to receive it. You was just passing by. Amen. In the name of Jesus, save them. Hallelujah. They laid out. Somebody was going up to spike the volleyball and missed it. Boom! <laughs> Fell into the fisherman's net. Just kidding. <laughs> but praise God. You know what? Co-workers and all kinds of stuff. You know what? I, I remember hearing stories of like with Pastor Ray and my Uncle Leonard. You know what? Going and working at, at Safeway. You know what? But to hear some of the stories and the time that they were there. You know what? How many people they led to Christ. You know, that's old school movement. You know what? It's no gimmicks. It's all about the gospel. You know what? All I have is the word. I don't have nothing else to offer you, but you know what? I'm a praying man or I'm a praying woman, and I read my word, and I'm born again, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm on a mission. Amen. 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 I'm on a mission. I'm in the mission field right now, and I'm trying to lead as many souls to Christ as I can. Amen. You know what? I'm trying to make bridges, not break bridges. I'm trying to start fires, not put out fires. Man, what are we trying to do in life, church? He says, let's go back. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. You know, a lot of times we're praying, you know what, that the Lord will forgive, you know what, other people's sins. That's their job to pray for, right. that the Lord will forgive them of their sins. You know what our job is, is to ask God to forgive us of our sins. Amen. You know what, the multiple sins that we commit daily, Amen. just by, you know, taking a glimpse here or having a thought here. Yes. You know what, repenting of those and, and, and going before the Lord right there, like he says, and, and asking for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. You know, what do they say? Sin separates us from what? From the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. So, man, I, I want to be asking the Lord to forgive me all the time. Why? Because I always want to feel the anointing. I always want to feel the presence of God. Come on, y'all know. When you're in a bad mood, do you feel the presence of God? Or do you feel the presence of Ricky? Huh? The presence of Pastor Leon. Huh? You know who you feel. It's not the Holy Ghost. It's something else. Everything gets under your skin. And I think a lot of times when we go through those type of things, when things irritate us and we're being bothered and things are getting under our skin, it's because God wants to speak to us. He says, you got your mind and your emotions and everything over here. And you don't know how to handle it. And what are you doing? You're saying things and feeling things, you know what, that you shouldn't feel. Is that a representation of Christ? Instead of taking a step back. All right, Lord. You say not to let the sun go down on my anger. That's what your word says. And I'm angry at this individual right now. And you don't have to go up and say, you know, oh, forgive me for being such a you-know-what. Just change your attitude. 
Because how many of you know a lot of people, they don't want to hear you say, I'm sorry. They want to see that you're sorry. I learned that from my wife. You know, but it goes with everything. You know, with love, with everything. You know what? Don't, don't tell me that you love me. Show me that you love me. Don't tell me that you're sorry. You know what? Show me that you're sorry. Don't tell me I won't do it again. Show me that you won't do it again. Show me. You know, and that's the same thing that, that God does with us. Because it's our job to ask him to forgive us of our sins. He says, and you will. Not you might. Not at some, you know, mysterious time. But as soon as you ask for those forgiveness of, uh, the, the forgiveness of your sins, he says what? He says, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But do you want it? Do you believe? You know, Jesus preached it. He said, do you want to be healed? He says, well, take up your mat, rise and walk. You know what? I don't have to grab your mat for you. You can do it. You know, right now, you know what? There's a lot of things that you and I could be doing, but we got to stop feeling sorry for ourselves, church. We got to stop beating ourselves up. We got to, you know, start slapping ourselves. And we got to move forward. You know what? We just got to ask the Lord to, to forgive us. Amen. You know how many of us, we ask God to forgive us, but we really don't mean it? Because we're still holding on to it. Holding on to unforgiveness is what? Bitterness. It's bitterness. And the more that you hold on to that unforgiveness or that bitterness, what is it going to do? It's just going to turn into poison and it's going to, man, it's going to hurt everything that it comes across. Let's go on. He says, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. For all. The Bible tells us that he died for the sins of the world. So all are called. Not just a few. You know, it's always bothered me with that, you know, and, and I see it more now, now that I'm getting older. But uh, the territorial type thing with different churches, and, it, and it's the same with, with big churches, with small churches, with Hispanic churches, with black churches, with Anglo churches. Man, hijole. Even Asian churches. You know, it's territorial. And I'm like, what's going on here, church? That's not a church filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a church filled with a whole bunch of pride and selfishness. But he goes, with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Man, if anything that I could tell you, you know what? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. And not only that, this same thing here. You know what? Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. You know what? Don't try to be like this generation. I don't care if everybody in the planet is wearing skinny jeans. Pastor Leon, don't fit in no skinny jeans. I'm not going to be like the rest of that corrupt generation. Something happened there. But we can't be like the rest of them, church. You know, we got to look at all these other churches out there. You know, we got to love them. We got to pray for them. You know, we got to look at all these people out here. You know, we got to love them. We got to pray for them. We got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what? I don't want my prayers to go by unanswered. You know what? I want my children to receive the Holy Spirit. I want my family members to be born again. But a lot of times we forfeit the power that God has given us. Man, he's given us that power and that authority, man. It's changed our lives. And if it's changed our lives, it could change those people's lives as well. He says those who accepted his message were baptized. 
And about 3,000 were added to that number that day. Man, what did they do? They accepted the message and were baptized. What was the message? Repent. The message wasn't Jesus died on the cross for you. The message wasn't he shed his blood for you. Yes, I know that's a message that we hear and we should know that. But what was the message? The message was repent and be born again in the name of Jesus. Repent. You know what? Because it's not rituals or anything like that. You know what? It's a relationship that we got to have with God. I could come up here with a fancy old suit, you know what, and, and that don't do nothing, that's outside stuff. Or I could come up here with my work clothes and be a, a, a teddy bear on the inside. That's what matters the most. Because that's the genuine outpouring of the Holy Spirit in an individual's life. He says they devoted themselves. I love this. How many of us are devoted to our jobs? <laughs> Come on now. Rain, no. sleet, or snow. I'm going to go, yeah. right? Ball tires, no brakes. We're going. <laughs> Jeez, we're going to make it. But they devoted themselves to the apostles', the apostles teachings. The apostles' teachings, they devoted themselves to them. How many of us devote ourselves to the word of God? Opening that word. Most of us are just, just, just scripture surfers, right? We're emotionally feeling something. Oh, I feel like I'm sad today, so let me look up Google for, give me 20 verses on lifting me up when I'm sad. Right? Oh, let me just read Proverbs and Psalms because they're full of wisdom because I want to be smarter. Well, how has that been working for you for the last 20, 20 years, 10 years, 5 years? You know what? We need to grow past that. That's not enough. You know, we got to devote ourselves to the Word of God. And when you devote yourself to something, what happens is you begin to, to live it. It's like, it's like a monk. When they go out there and they stay in those places, they devote themselves to something. we got to devote ourselves to the Word of God. Man, you know what, Lord? What's your Word saying to me? Because my walk may not be your walk, church. So get your eyes off of me. You know, get your eyes off of everybody else that are out there and get filled with the Holy Ghost and start walking your walk. You know what? We're always trying to judge our brothers and sisters and look at all their faults. You know, you got to do it this way and you got to do it that way instead of walking in harmony with the Holy, with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Ghost. You know what? I'm going this way and God is taking me this way. And encouraging one another. And lifting one another up. I'm tired of all the struggle, church, all the fighting. But we gotta, we got to devote ourselves to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Amen, amen. Man, the breaking of bread. Amen. Bread was like a, like a necessity back then. Amen. And you hear about bread, you know what I mean, a lot and, and, and different things that it relates to. But in the breaking of bread, That's right. you know what, this is what the Lord imparted to me. Yes. So I'm going to give it to you. You know, it's like a, a father teaching his son how to do something. Well, that's not the way you use that wrench, Chito. Here, let me show you. You use it like this. And then all of a sudden, you know what? He's off to the races, and you can't stop him from loosening every bolt around the house. Why is everything falling apart? Leon! Just kidding. <laughs> Where's my wrench? You know, devoting ourselves to, and doing that, but giving to others what God has imparted to us and praying. Man, you know what, Lord? The wisdom and the stuff that you imparted onto me, Lord, I just shared it with another brother, Lord, and, and now I'm praying, Lord, that you would just increase and multiply in this brother's life. Change him. Let's go on. He says, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. 
Man, how many people they say that about, you know, about the things that you do? They go, wow. Not really, huh? Man, that's so awesome. That's great. You know what the Bible tells us? That they overcome by the word of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. How come people are not looking at us, you know what I mean, and they're not saying, you know what, wow, that's awesome. Because we've been operating off of the flesh instead of the Spirit of God. You know, when you, when you move by the Spirit of God, you know what, it's, it's amazing and, and, and wonderful. And what it does is it causes people to see in awe. It's just magnificent. It's like, wow, I didn't know you could wash dishes like that. <laughs> wow you know it's just a thing of awe and everything that you do you know what it's just like people see and they're like wow you know it's because you like you take pride in something have you ever seen people like that they're just men and women of, of character you know what, they'll go do something, you'll tell them, you know, and I'm just going to use this as a reference. You tell them to clean a room. But, man, they clean that room like if it was their own, you know what I mean? Like, they move everything, dust everywhere, get every nook and cranny, you know what I mean? Put Magnificent, and then somebody looks at it, they're like, wow, you did this? That's what people ought to see in us. They ought to see the, the, the wow factor. <coughs> wow, God did that in your life? Wow, God's doing this for you? Wow, that's amazing. Let's go on. And he says, and all the believers were together and had everything in common. Why do believers fight so much and they're so uncommon? You know, it's like a tribe of Indians. And there's all kinds of chiefs and not enough Indians, right? Same thing here as believers. But see, they were all together and they had everything in common. You know what, brother? What, what you don't have, he has. And what, what, what he has, you know what? You don't have. And what you don't have, I have. You know what? When you're, when, when, when you're in need, I'm there to, to, to meet that need. You know, when I'm hurting and broken, you're there to help me and lift me up. You know, all things in common, we were there to, to help each other out. They had all things in common. And that's what we need to be. We need to have all things in common. But see, so, so many people, they're just at odds with one another, church. They're at odds with one another. Everybody's fighting for positions. Everybody's fighting for rank. What rank are we fighting for in the Lord's army? Huh? I don't know. Everybody thinks they're going to be, just because they read so much of the word and they know this and that, that they're going to be the, the, the lieutenant or what. Do you know what I mean? We're all on the front lines. We're all Marines as far as I'm concerned in the army of the Lord. We're going to put us on the front lines. And we're all the same, church. We're all the same. Amen? He says, they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Let's go on. He says, and every day, every day, not just on Sunday, not just a couple days out of the week, but every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. You know what that just goes to show me is that they were never too busy to meet as brothers and sisters in Christ. And not only that, to meet the Lord. Amen. You know, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, it seems like you got all kinds of time. But when you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, come on now. Some of those days, you just ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? There's days I ain't filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm filled with Leon. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Everything. 
All the phone calls that were everything. You know what? I just wasn't feeling it. And instead of doing this, I'm tired. I'm just going to stay home today. Oh, man, I hate my job. Or this or that or this or that. Why? You know, when you feel like that, you ought to come running to the church and you ought to start calling brothers and sisters and say, you know what, pray for me. And you just, The first thing you ought to do is just repent. Just put it that way. First thing you ought to do is repent in the name of Jesus. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. You know what, Lord, forgive me for feeling like this. Forgive me for doing this. You know what, I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And it says, and they met together daily and they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Man, how many of us are glad and sincere to see some of our brothers and sisters in Christ? Oh, man. Comes the brother again. Jeez. Lock the doors. <laughs> no? I should be receiving them with gladness. You know about those ones when their house is all tore up from the floor up? You should have called me before you came. Everything's all in shambles all out there, all messed up. What did he say? He said to, to break bread. All I have is one piece of toast left, man. You, you want it? It's a little moldy, but it's yours if you want it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he said, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Man, I don't see too many people going around praising God all day and enjoying the favor of the people. They're always talking about everybody. Trump this and Trump that and Biden this and Biden that and, 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 and Jesus this and Jesus that. Pastor Leon this and Pastor Leon that. Brother this and brother that. Huh? Instead of praising, you know, being all happy and excited and, and, and full of joy. Man, do you believe how old brother is, man? He's still over there doing this and doing that. Man, do you believe that? That sister was over there doing this and doing that, man? Praise God. Hallelujah. But instead, we look at all the negative stuff. Oh, they don't go to church. They only come to church when they want to come to church. Are you praying that God will get them excited as, as you are to come to church? Because when you're like that, oh, I wish they would come to church. It doesn't even seem like you're excited to be at church. <laughs> what did you come to church for? Just to see if somebody else is coming to church? I came to church for four months and you never came. <laughs> Not once. And then they come that one time and then you don't come back. <coughs> huh? Why do we come to church? We come to church because of the Lord, right? Yeah. We come to the church for the Lord. And you know what? We got to praise God and enjoy the favor of all the people. And see, when we begin to live like that, it said that the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You know why New Hope Ministries of Brian isn't being filled up? We can blame the coronavirus. Go ahead. See, they even laughed at that one. Huh? You can blame the coronavirus. But who's going to want to come to a church where the people ain't full of joy? Who's going to want to come to a church, you know, when, when people are just too consumed about themselves? You know what? All they do is care about themselves. Most of us walk in that door, and all we care about is ourselves and our problems and all that. And it's not about the people. It's not about God. It's not being full of joy and being in the presence of God, you know, what? and happy to be amongst brothers and sisters in Christ, even people who ain't your brothers and sisters. Most of us, you know what? We are not people, people. And God is trying to pull that out of us. He's placed us in jobs and positions and, and all kinds of things so that way we could learn how to start loving people. 
to love them. But it's so sad that the reason why people ain't getting added to the number daily and being saved is because of the heart condition of the people who are saved. You know, what bold statement did Peter make to the crowd? Let's go back to, to verse 38. I want you to look in there and you guys tell me what, what bold statement did, did Peter make to the crowd? Repent. Repent. Now that's a bold statement. Man, what does it say? It says to, to judge those inside the church and not outside the church. So right now, you know what? Peter's telling, he's taking a bold step, repent. And he's not using it in a negative way. He's using it in a positive way. You know what? But the world is so sick right now and so twisted that when you talk about repentance, it's a bad word. And it's not something that's good. You know what? Repent. Are you tired of feeling the way you're feeling? Are you tired of doing the things that you're doing? Are you tired of looking at things the way that you're looking at them? You don't want to repent that. It's that simple. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Ah, oh, Lord. You know, I know how to feel bad about myself. I know how to get down on myself. But you know what? I also know how it feels when I feel good about myself. You know what? When Leon feels good about himself, man, there's nothing that Leon cannot do. You know what? My attitude and, and everything is, is totally different. Why? Because I feel good about myself. You know what? So why wouldn't we want to repent? And why wouldn't we want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? So that way we can feel good about ourselves. No matter what we're going through in life, no matter what we're facing. You know what? No matter if we don't have money to pay the bills, no matter if we don't have no food in the fridge, no matter if we're sick, no matter if we're getting ready to, to die, you know what? It don't matter. Why? Because I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm happy. And I'm full of joy. And I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, how did the people react to Peter's declaration. How did they act to Peter's declaration? Let's go on to the next verse. And the next one. Let's see the next one. Next one. Let's see here. Well, their reaction was that they had a fear for the Lord. And it's not a fear to where they were like scared of God. They weren't scared of God. What happened is, is they began to have a great respect for God. See, so many Christians have put a bad name for the Lord out there because of their lifestyles and the way that they've lived. You know what? And people don't have a fear of respect for God the way people used to. See, and that's why we got to be born again. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? So that way people be could begin to see and respect and have a fear for the Lord once again. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You know, what instructions did Peter give to the people? He told them to repent of their sins. Mm -hmm. And he told them to be baptized. Okay. You know, that's important. And to whom is the Holy Spirit available? It told us that it was available to all who repent of their sins. The Holy Spirit is available to all who repent of their sins. Not just a few people. Not through going through all kinds of ritual. Oh, you've got to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior first. You've got to do all these things. That ain't true. How do I know that not to be true? Because, you know what, when I was in a jail cell... And I asked God to forgive me of my sins. He forgave me of my sins. Right there, he changed me in a jail cell. I didn't have to go to no priest. I didn't have to go through all kinds of rituals. Right then and there, when I sincerely wanted to change, he changed me. He changed me. Just like he did you. You know, how did the new believers grow in their faith? And how did they practice that faith with one another? Let's, that's found in verse 42. 
It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, to the fellowship. You know, what are they, what, what's the enemy breaking apart right now? Fellowship. There's things that we're not even seeing in the supernatural church that are taking place right now in Scripture. You know what? What is the enemy doing? He's, he's breaking apart the fellowship. You know what? Look at what's going on in, in these teenagers' life, in these kids, in the schools, and, and the suicide rates, and all these things that are climbing and on a rise. Why? Because they're isolated and separated from, from friends and families and, and activities. Churches are the same way. You know what? They're in spiritual suicide right now. Why? Because they're not gathering together. They're forsaking the gathering of the fellowship of the brethren. And in doing so, they're committing spiritual suicide. Yes. Right. Amen. Spiritual suicide. The fellowship. Man, fellowship is so important, church. You know what? Where would we be if we didn't have fellowship with Jesus, with the Lord? You know, what would we be if we didn't have fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. Man, we would be like the skinny guy going to the gym. You know what? He just walks into the gym and looks at the weights, but he never picks up the weights. What happens? He always stays in the corner and he's always skinny. Same thing with the Christian. You know, what? we're born to be warriors. You know what? The Lord breathed his own breath into us to give us a war cry that cries out. It says, Abba, Father. It's just like David. Perfect example. David and Goliath, at that time, he couldn't put on Solomon's armor. Why couldn't he put on that armor? Because it was too big for him. He didn't fit in that armor yet. You know what, how many of us are still trying to grow and to fit in the armor that God has given us? Man, where's your sword? Where's your shield? Where's your helmet? Are you still trying to grow into them or are you already wearing them? Because by now we should be wearing our armor. Because the Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God. To put it on. You know, I want you to think about this church. Um, I'm going to read you a quick little story here. There was a transformed group that stood beside a transformed Peter as he announced some weeks later. So all the people of Israel should know this truly. God has made Jesus the man you nailed to the cross, both Lord and Christ. No timidity in his words, no reluctance. About 3,000 people believed his message. The apostles sparked a movement, and the people became followers of the death conqueror. They couldn't hear enough or say enough about him. Christ was their model, their message. They preached Jesus Christ and him crucified, not for the lack of another topic, but because they couldn't exhaust this one. What unlocked the doors of the apostles' hearts? Simple. They saw Jesus. They encountered Christ. Their sins collided with the Savior, and their Savior won. A lot of things would happen to them over the next few decades. Many nights would be spent away from home. Hunger would gnaw at their bellies. Rain would soak their skin. Stones would bruise their bodies. Shipwrecks, lashings, martyrdom. But there was a scene in the repertoire of memories that caused them to never look back. They betrayed coming back to find his betrayers, not to scourge them, but to send them. Not to criticize them for forgetting, but to commission them to remember. Remember that he who was dead is alive, and they who were gutly who have been forgiven. Been forgiven. Now I want you to take this home with you. And maybe if you want to share, you know what I mean, you can if you feel like it, but what changes has Jesus made in your life?
You know, and, and the Lord makes changes every day sometimes. Sometimes they're, they're, they're long term, sometimes they're short term, but you know what, he, he makes changes. But how many of you are thinking about these things and how many of you guys ever ask yourselves these questions? You know what, Lord, what changes have you made in my life? You know, what circumstances caused you to open your heart to God? What was it that caused you to open your heart to God? You know what, a failed relationship you know what, a, a fight, an anger, brokenness. You know, it could be a number of things that, that, that we may have. But, you know, what was it that caused you to open your heart to the Lord? Do you remember how you felt that day? Do you remember what you were going through? And do you remember how it felt when you opened up that door for the Lord to come into your heart? Why do some people resist the convicting work of the Holy Spirit? Can you be honest about this one, church? Why do we resist the convicting work of the Holy Spirit? It's because we don't want to let it go. We don't want to, we don't, we don't want to change. We, we say we want to change, but we really don't want to change. And we have that, the convicting work of the Holy Spirit, man. We're like, oh. You know, you could smile all you want in front of an individual, but inside, you know you're not smiling. Because that's something that you want to get rid of and let go. You know, the Holy Spirit gave Peter boldness to speak the truth. What ability or gift have you received from God? A lot of you don't, you don't think about this, do you? This is one thing that I, would dis I, I want to share with you. Because a lot of times we think about gifts and abilities just in a church setting. You know, maybe speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, or this or that. But you know what? We were born with God-given gifts, talents, and abilities. And I want you to think about in the past, you know, I mean, things that you're good at. Things that you have, your abilities that, that God has blessed you with, talents and gifts. Those are those abilities that, that you got to begin thanking God for. Those are the abilities that you ought to be conditioning and tuning in to, to be used for God's glory. But a lot of times we're looking at other things, man. We don't realize that, that we got it. You know, maybe you have a gift of talking. I don't know. Some people got a gift of talking. I don't. I could talk a lot, but, you know... <laughs> You know, gift of giving, gifts of healing. You know what? There's all kinds of different gifts. You know, sometimes people think that gifts of healing is like, you know what? Like you, you're laying hands on somebody and they're sick and they're getting. That's not a gift of healing. You know, when somebody's down and out and they're all sad and messed up and you go over there and you lift up their spirits, it's a gift of healing. Being able to make somebody smile. You know, there's a whole bunch of comedians in here. Huh? I don't know why I ain't seen no comedian skits, Christian comedian skits in this church yet. <laughs> you know, how have you discovered the spiritual gifts God has given you? How have you discovered them? I just gave you a big little hint and tip in that one. How to discover them. Look back on your childhood, your past. And how can you use your gifts to help bring others into God's kingdom? Man, I know people out there who are artists. And they use that gift that, they've ha that they have to, to, to bring people to Christ. You know what, there's people out there that, that make jewelry. For instance, there, my mom got me this, this cross one time, and it was a crown of thorns with a sword, and it, it all comes apart, but there's a story to it, and you use it for witnessing. You know what I mean? There, there's gifts and talents that, that a lot of people have out there. You know, real, you know, crafts, different types of things. You know what I mean? Man, some people are, 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 are good at, at teaching kids how to, to play sports. You know, and raise kids to, to, to be men and, and women and stuff like that. But you know what? In, in doing those type of things to be able to point them to the Lord at the same time. 
You know, we got a lot of people pointing people to the world and, you know what, and, and all that nonsense, but what about the people pointing people to good? Man. Everybody wants to think everything's bad. Oh, baseball's bad. Football's bad. You know, no, it's not. You know, if it wasn't for people running around half of the time like that, you know, people got scholarships. People were able to go to school and do all kinds of things because, you know what, of the talent that God has given them. But what had happened is, you know what, like the arrows in the story that the Bible talks about, the arrows, aiming those arrows and, and letting them go in the right direction. You know what, who was the person behind that arrow? You know, and it's such a process, and it's a blessing as you see that you're filled with the Holy Ghost. That you know what, I, I thank God for for people who are filled with the Holy Ghost at a young age. Why? Because they go through life filled with the Holy Ghost, and as as they get older, man, it's just such a blessing because they get to see how awesome God really is, and they get to go through phases, and they get to realize that in every season, in every phase in life, that they gotta help somebody because they were empowered by the Holy Ghost. Man, what are we doing in our lives? You know what? I know when, when we're younger, you know what? We have a different plan and purpose. And then as we become middle-aged, we got a different plan and purpose. And as we get, you know, older, we got a different plan and purpose. You know what? I always want to see God's plan and purpose as I begin to get older and progress in life and how I can help people. And help people no matter how old I get. Man, Lord, if you got to put me in the, in the old folks' home, put me in the old folks' home. But let me be in there for a plan and purpose. Whatever you, wherever you do, wherever you send me, filled with the Holy Ghost with a plan and a purpose. Amen? Amen. You know, authentic followers of Jesus always have company. How come the church always wants to be Lone Rangers? You know, a lot of times I've been finding this out in life. You know what? A lot of people, they like to do things on their own and by themselves is because either they're cutting corners, they don't want somebody to find out what they're doing, or they're just messed up. But right here, you know what? We got we to gotta have company. In fact, if we feel all alone in our faith, one of the explanations may be that we're not following Jesus as closely as we think we are. <laughs> I had this mentality, church. I know. I feel all alone. Because I'm the pastor and nobody wants to invite. I feel all alone. Shut up, Leon. You need to follow Jesus. Come on, can't feel all alone. That's why you feel all alone. Why? Because you're over here pouting with your thumb in your mouth instead of following Jesus. Stop pouting with your thumb in your mouth and, and being a little baby. Start following Jesus. You know, we all see it. We see kids that throw temper tantrums, right? When we were growing up, man, there's all, there's like 15 kids at the, at the birthday party or whatever, and you see the little one in the corner by himself. Sucking his thumb, all mad. Well, what's wrong? They're mean to me. Well, what are they doing to you? Well, they're doing this to me. Well, do it back. Why? So you can be a part of them. You know, you go there, you know, I'm going to be a part. I'm not going there. I'm going to have fun, too. You're having fun? I'm going to have fun, too. <laughs> they tell you to shut up? No, you shut up. Huh? And they say, oh, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. Huh? Right? I'm going to keep going. But you know, a lot of times we, we want to be by ourselves, and we can't do that. We got we to gotta have companions, church. The first disciples went from feeling all alone to speaking out and discovering over 3,000 new companions. Man, imagine when they were all alone, when they were up in the upper room, and you know, when all that stuff was going on, they thought, they thought life was over. Oh, they killed Jesus. Now they're going to kill us. They're, they, we better hide. We better run. And as soon as they got over that mentality of hiding and running, they said, you know what, we need to stick together. Why? Because there's power in numbers, not in lone rangers. Power in numbers, church. You know, the practice of faith involves others. 
the practice of faith involves others. A lot of us, we're telling the Lord to increase our faith, and we wonder why he, he sends other people in our lives. Come on. <laughs> That's why. If you want your faith to increase, guess what? Iron sharpens iron, and you need to be around other people. You know, you got to make it a point to pursue healthy relationships with other believers. You got to ask Jesus to change you into an agent of peace in every situation you find yourself in. And you got to ask Him to make you into good company. You know, the whole thing at the end of the day is why don't people want to be around you? Why don't people enjoy spending time with you? Is it just because you don't wear deodorant? Could be. But I'm pretty sure they could look over that one. You know, your personality, your attitude. You know what? Are you pleasant to be around? Because if you ain't pleasant to be around, you know what? God is showing you right there in a spiritual mirror that's right in front of you that you got to change some things. Because we got to be people, people. How many of us sometimes just can't stand our boss? Man, you just see the ugly in them, right? Ugh. Man. But how many of us, you know, we pray the wrong way? Lord, you better just touch him now and get him out of the office before I do this. <laughs> Change me, Lord. Huh? Man, Lord. And then they always, you know what, and it seems like, it, and it, it is, it's, it's on purpose. Because whose skin does it get under? It gets under our skin, right? What's God trying to get up from under our skin? E, we're blaming the boss, his attitude. What about our attitude? What about our faith? Aren't we born again? You know what our first prayer ought to be? You know what, Lord, you ought to, instead of saying, you better get rid of him, Lord, before, then it should have been like, you know what, Lord, right now, this bothers me so much, and I don't know why. And right now, I just ask you to forgive me of all my sins, and Holy Spirit, right now, you take control of me. And Holy Spirit, right now, you lead me into all truth, because what's that truth? That truth is, is, is the Lord, you know what, and, and it's, his, it's, his, it's His presence, everything about Him. Man, Lord, why? Because I want people to see you. Man, I've only heard of a few people that, you know, people that they had bosses that were so rotten to them. Like rotten. And they worked for them for years, and it wasn't up until retirement that they said, you know what, I don't know. Why you stood with me so long? I was just so rotten to you. They go, but you know what? The thing that I seen in you changed me. It changed me. You know, a lot of times we expect instant outcomes, church. Come on, that's right. Instant outcomes. And we think just because we're praying and we're doing the right things that things could just change magically overnight. It don't work like that. See, when you're empowered by the Holy Ghost, what happens is you're able to walk that walk of faith. You know, when you're being, when you're being you know, persecuted and all the stuff that you're going through and, and things are falling apart, you're still walking with integrity. And those things that are coming and hitting you, you know what, they're just falling right off and you just keep moving and you keep going and people all around you are seeing that. And they want that. Tonight, church, we're going to come up and pray. But I want to leave you with 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. Just to show you that the Holy Spirit can change people. And it says, the Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you. And you will prophesy with them, and you will change into a different person. 
you will change into a different person. You know what the power of prophecy is? What was prophecy that I explained to you from, from, from a, a biblical standpoint? Prophecy is God's word. So what's going to happen is you're going to begin to prophesy. You're going to begin to speak God's word. And when you're speaking God's word, guess what's going to happen to you in your life? You're going to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. And being empowered by the Holy Ghost because you're born again, you're going to become a new person. And everybody's going to know it. Everybody's going to see it. There's no denying it. And you're going to impact thousands and thousands of people's lives. So I encourage you here tonight, church, to be born again and to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Just repent. Trust Him. And watch what He does, amen, for His glory and for His honor. God bless you here tonight, church.